It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. You cannot afford to be silent in this situation. That means if you'll dare to lift your voice, not only will it set you free, but it'll set people all around you free if you'll dare to lift your voice. They just started singing praises to God, giving glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that's within me, bless his holy name. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your faithfulness to your word, your faithfulness to your name. Praise God. Come on, practice right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Woo. Ha, 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 ha. Take it to the next level. Ha 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 ha. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God. Come on, I gotta fill my basket up here. I don't know what you're facing, but it'll lift off of you if you'll dare to fill up that praise basket and give the glory to God, give thanks to God, get magnify the Lord, magnify his word. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Ha 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 ha. Keep standing just for a moment. It says that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. Let's try this over time. Come on, you got the word, you got the promise. Abraham didn't stagger at that and say, oh, that's too good, that can't happen here. He staggered not at the promise of God, but he became strong in faith. He became strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded what God has promised. He is able also to perform it. He will bring it to pass. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promise. I rejoice over your word. I rejoice over your word. Come on, it may not look like it right now, may not feel like it right now, but I dare you to fill up your praise basket. Fill up your praise basket. Thank God for his faithfulness to his word. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Sit back down a minute. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm just about finished, Pastor Joel. Here's what Brother Hagin, he said, Dad Hagen, a lot of his, I, I've listened to a lot of his messages many, many times. But the one, one of my favorites is the one he has on confession. And there's probably more than one, but my, my favorite one is called Four Kinds of Confession. And I usually get to the number two or three in that one. And he goes into the confession of your faith. The power of the confession of your faith. Hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering the importance of your confession. Hold fast. We have a great high priest. Let us hold fast our confession. Hold on tight. Don't turn loose of it. Amen. Then Hebrews 3, 1, Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession. Y'all still with me? Hebrews 3, 1, 4, 14, 10, 23. Did you know Hebrews 13, 15 is the same identical word as confession in Hebrews 4.14. Y'all still with me? What's that? Giving thanks to his name. 
is the same Greek word as confession in 414. In other words, while you're praising God, it's your confession that God is greater, that Jesus is Lord. Amen. And your confession of faith, holding fast to that, that the original initial confession of the believer is that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe. He is Lord. He's master. Hallelujah. His blood. I said his blood. Woo, his blood. It's the blood of his cross. And God sees us through that blood, but it's not just the blood of his cross because Hebrews 9, 12 says he took his blood into heaven when he was raised from the dead and he obtained eternal redemption for us. So it's not just the blood of his cross, it's literally the blood of his triumph and the blood of his resurrection. And the blood of Jesus is in the presence of God right now and God lives in constant view of that blood. That blood woo, has opened heaven but that blood comes into direct contact with a believer's heart through faith and through the power of the Holy Ghost. The, the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit are inseparable. Wherever the blood of Jesus is honored, the Holy Spirit will work. Wherever the Holy Spirit works, the blood of Jesus will be honored. Everything that the blood of Jesus does in heaven the Holy Spirit does in the believer's heart. It must not just be faith without application. To have faith in the blood means there must be an application. And in the book of Hebrews, he says that application happens through your confession and through your praise. My mama was constantly slinging the blood everywhere. You know what I mean by that? Because in the Old Testament, when they had, when they had worship, they put blood on everybody. They're slinging blood on everybody. You couldn't even go to church and worship without getting blood on you. Come on, it's in Hebrew, Exodus in Hebrew. Priest take blood, sprinkle the book, sprinkle everybody. My mama was, was sling blood. Sprinkle the blood by faith. In other words, she would lift her voice and she would say something like, I plead the blood. Now, we didn't know what that meant. And some people say, well, that's not in the New Testament. And I tried to tell my mother that. She said, well, it seems to be working for me, so I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> so Dad Hagen said, he said, I didn't know what the Spirit-filled people were doing. He said, I was raised Baptist, so I came over the Spirit-filled people because they believed in healing. He said, that's how I got filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, so when I came over to Spirit-filled Spirit -filled people, he said, our Pentecostal people, he said, they would always say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. He said, I didn't understand exactly what they were doing, but he said, it, it worked so well for me, I still do it to this day. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. What does that mean? Plead is simply a legal term. That means I bring my case to rest. How do you plead? I bring my case to rest on the power of the blood of Jesus, what it's done in heaven, what it does in my heart, what it does over the devil. I plead the blood right now. I apply that blood and I rest my case. Nothing left to do but praise right now because I rest my case on the power of that blood. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. My mama had a lot of applications for that. In the Old Testament, I plead. 
But in the New Testament, it's called faith in the blood from Romans 3.25. Faith in the blood. I plead the blood. Synonymous. I have faith in the blood. I rest my case on the power of the blood. So my mom said, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. Many applications. If she felt sickness or disease coming on her body or something, she'd say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. If we're going on a trip, she'd say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. So I grew up around that. Even one time I brought a girlfriend home from high school, had a mini skirt on. I could tell my mama didn't like her because she said, I plead the blood of Jesus right now. <laughs> Finally, I brought Trina home from Bible college and my mama said, thank God for the blood. I thank you for the blood. <laughs> I plead the blood or I apply the blood, I lift my voice and I apply it to the doorpost of my family and my life. In other words, I don't just believe in the blood in the house. I got the blood on the doorpost and God said, when I see the blood, there's a covering over your life, a divine covering. Ha, 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 ha. So somebody's got to put the blood on the doorpost. Somebody's got to start talking about it, praising God for it, lift your voice, and make a confession of faith about the power of the blood of Jesus. So in Hebrews, you've got the blood covenant. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, God is working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Well, you ought to laugh about that. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, So you've got the blood covenant, you've got the blood of his cross and his death, and then you've got the blood concerning your confession of faith. Amen. So my mama would say, the blood of Jesus. And I got this little card from Grace Ruth. And she said it this way, the blood of Jesus purges me from every defilement of the enemy. Amen. Let's try that again. The blood of Jesus. Here's the way Wigglesworth said it. There's not one thing in me the blood does not cleanse. Come on, let's just try that. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to stay up there or not, but I'm coming down here a minute. Praise the Lord. So your confession, come on, mixed with your praise and lifting your voice The blood of Jesus, I plead the blood, or the blood of Jesus purges me from every defilement of the enemy. There's not one thing in me the blood does not cleanse. And Jesus, when he said, this is my blood, this is my body, in the New Testament, this blood of the New Testament for the remission of sin. Someone pointed out forgiveness in the Old Testament, but remission in the New Testament. The difference between forgiveness and remission is remission means cancellation of penalty and the removal of guilt. Go ahead and laugh for a minute. In the Old Testament, God said, I will not remember your sin. But in the New Testament, the blood has the power to remove your sin from your remembrance. In other words, sin consciousness is removed from you and guilt is removed from you by the power of the blood of Jesus. Woo, that means not only did God forget about it, but I forgot about it because of the power of the blood. So your confession, whoo, I, I got to finish here. What time is it? 12 o'clock. The blood of Jesus. Get, get your snack and come back and pay attention. The blood of Jesus. Your confession of faith, the basis of your praise, the blood of Jesus purges me from every defilement of the enemy. 
Andrew Murray said, you honor the blood by boldly confessing that it cleanses you from all sin, from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. Woo! Andrew Murray said, to enjoy this blessing, nothing is necessary except faith in the blood of Jesus. He said, the blood of Jesus has done everything. This blood. Woo! Has opened heaven, reached into your conscience, into your heart, and we overcome Satan by the blood of a lamb and the word of our testimony. That means the power of that blood, woo, and your confession of faith. Ha 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 ha. The power of that blood. I'm rejoicing over that blood. I'm redeemed by the blood. I'm washed in the blood. I overcome by the blood. Enjoy this blessing. Well, I feel like slapping somebody this morning. I said, to enjoy this blessing. I said, to enjoy this blessing. Yeah. Nothing is necessary except faith in the blood of Jesus. His blood alone has done everything. He purchased our freedom with his own blood. Are you washed in the blood? Are you cleansed by the blood? Act like you're free because of the blood. Act like you're blessed because of the blood. You take this cup of blessing because of the blood of Jesus. His blood is on the doorpost of your house. His blood over your soul and over your life. His blood, come on, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives us strength, Woo! it will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. Ha! Ha ha! Woo! Ha 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 ha! Sit down one minute. I'm just about finished. Pastor George, tell me if you want me to stop. Listen. When you take communion, Woo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your confession, yeah. but when you take communion of the Lord's Supper, come on the body, the blood. Our little grandson, Dylan, huh, wow, we've had two and a half years, two and a half years ago, he's a twin, when he's three years old, diagnosed with leukemia. Man, two and a half years, man, hospital two and a half years, quarantined much of the time. And so we, we thought he is finished. And one week before they rang the bell, the doctor came out and said, we've seen some bad cells. And so he needs to have a bone marrow transplant. Man, we were like, wow. But you know, we ain't whooped. I said, we ain't whooped. So she sent us to New Orleans with my daughter and Dylan. We had, oh, how long? Four or five months in New Orleans. Quarantined most of the time. And so she took, they had to get a donor and found that Gavin, Dylan's brother, was a donor. Three of them qualified, but Gavin was the best. And Gavin was not that happy about it. <laughs> and so Gavin had to go in the hospital four days and they took his blood, put a line to his heart and took his blood for four days, and they got enough blood to last the rest of Dylan's life. And they took the blood, put it in a dialysis machine, and got the stem cells. And then the day came where they were going to give Gavin's stem cells to Dylan. <laughs> and we had to go outside. We're looking through a glass. Doctor is in there. And she's done so many of these, just a great lady. And she put Gavin's stem cells on, the, on, on a pole. It looked just like a cross when we were looking there. Wow. Precious blood on that pole. 
And she said, the next six hours are going to be critical because either he's going to receive those stem cells or he will reject them. We said, when those stem cells go into Dylan, he's going to say, welcome, come home. We're glad to see you. Come on in. Now, here's what the doctor said. The doctor said, here's the starting, the stem cells of Gavin, the donor, going into Dylan. And before, before the process st started, she stood by the bed and she said to Dylan, Mr. Dylan, we are getting ready to say goodbye to you because you will never be the same person after this. We studied some of it and we found out that once the bone marrow transplant takes place, that literally, if Gavin had committed a crime, Dylan could be convicted of it because they have the same blood, same DNA. And that literally Gavin's, if his eye color was different from Dylan, it would change Dylan's eye color, change his hair, change his skin. Listen, and because that new blood runs through his brain, they said it will even affect his personality, which means he's going to start liking what Gavin likes and, <laughs> and start disliking what Gavin don't like. It's very true to this day. So when that blood started going in, those stem cells started going in to Dylan, six hours. Dylan was just singing through the whole process. Matter of fact, for, for two and a half years, we would play uh, Eddie James' song, The Same Spirit That Raised Jesus From Death, and Dylan would dance, and we'd all dance. <laughs> and before he left the hospital the other day, before he got in the car, none of us told him, but before he got in the car in, the, in front of the hospital in New Orleans, Dylan said, excuse me, I'm not getting the car yet. I need to dance. <laughs> so he danced in front of the hospital. He just went like, he just went like this. Man, man I come out of that. <laughs> so he, perfect six hours. Then just a few weeks later, the doctor said, now I'm going to test him and see what percentage of Gavin's stem cells are in Dylan and what percentage are Dylan's old stem cells. So we're like, praise the Lord, because we want good success. And she came back. She said, I got some good news. She said, we hardly ever see anything like this. That Dylan is already 100% Gavin. Medical science can do something like that. I wonder who the donor was that gave you his blood. I wonder who the donor was that gave you his blood. Oh, the blood of God, the blood of Jesus. Oh, his blood, the blood of Jesus. Ha, ha, his blood applied to you. You say, welcome, come on. You are watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Are you struggling to overcome obstacles that hinder you from receiving your healing? Are you tired of going from doctor to doctor, taking all kinds of medicine and not getting results? Well, we have good news for you. The book, God's Healing Word by Pastor Trina Hankins, is a practical guide to receiving divine healing. This book is a perfect prescription for anyone struggling with sickness, disease, even mental or emotional challenges. The practical instruction in this book is not only the product of diligent study, but is also the proven divine medicine that saved Pastor Trina's life when she had an inoperable brain tumor. Included in this practical guide to receiving your healing, you will find these helpful tools, testimonies, and practical teaching that will help you know God's will, healing scriptures to strengthen your faith, and you'll learn how to act on God's word, use your authority, receive your healing, and maintain your healing. You will also receive a bonus three CD set, The Praise Cure, where Pastor Mark Higgins teaches how praising God releases power, and the power of God causes healing. The Praise Cure doesn't cost a thing. It is very delightful and works all the time. Order this.
this special book and CD set today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book by Pastor Trina Hankins, God's Healing Word, and the three CD set by Pastor Mark Hankins, The Praise Cure. Order today and start living in God's best divine health. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us today for the program where we have been talking about the subject of healing. I know there are so many, many of you even that have watched today that are believing God for your healing, believing God for a miracle. It may be in your body, it may be in your mind, it may be in your soul. Whatever it is, we know that it is God's will for you to be healed and it is God's will for you to walk in divine healing. So I hope that this message has been encouraging to you. If you don't already have my mom's book, God's Healing Word, I encourage you to get this book. It is her personal testimony of being healed of a brain tumor. And it's also how not only she got to that place of healing, but how she has kept her healing all of these years. It will help you. It gives you scriptures to stand on. It gives you testimony, which also strengthens your faith because you know if, if God's done it for someone else that he'll do it for you. It also has a CD in the back where you can listen to um, scriptures being read by my dad. And you can just keep that playing. When my son was in the hospital, we kept it playing in his hospital room all the time. And it's just the word constantly filling the atmosphere, filling your heart and your mind and your soul. And it brings so much peace. So we want you to have this for free. And if you want to be a blessing to the ministry for your gift of any amount, we will send you this book. We want you to have the resources that you need to fight and to keep fight, fighting and seeing the full manifestation of your healing. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.